And I did a video right after All Out, or a few days after All Out, and I talked about with this whole CM Punk elite AEW drama, how everybody looks stupid. Everybody looks like an idiot, a loser. And that bothered you too bad because it's reality. Everybody involved frickin' does. I mean, how stupid do you have to be for your being CM Punk that you're about to fumble your bag over Colt Cabana? Somebody who you even talked about, like, you have wanted fuck all to do with them for years. And then of all things, you choose the post-all-out media scrum to do that. You're whining about Hangman Page going into business for himself, but yet you're doing that your damn self. Fucking typical hypocrisy you would expect out of Philip Brooks. The epitome of a fucking whiny ass bitch. Dude's making a whole lot of money. Doesn't have to do a whole lot, let's be realistic here. And yet, he can't stop pissing, whining, and moaning. Typical CM Punk crap. And screw him for disrespecting the locker room, TK, AEW. I, you can't get mad on the one hand about somebody else going into business for themselves and being disrespectful. And then you do the same fucking thing yourself. Like pot meat kettle here. So you look like a freaking idiot. The elite are about to fumble their bag over Colt Cabana. So they look like idiots. Is it really worth it? You're supposed to be EVPs, act like it. Getting your panties in a while and then going to trying to sit there and go after punk and shit. Like, should have been fired. Hell, I'd hold you to a higher standard because you're supposed to be EVPs. That comes with an additional level of leadership and responsibility that you clearly are ill-equipped for. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like these grown-ass men acting like high school girls and frickin' drama. Stupid. And they look like idiots doing so. And then Tony Khan, too. Letting this shit fall apart over Colt Cabana. How you gonna sit there and just let CM Punk say what the hell he says? Tell him stop that shit in public. And if he doesn't, then you clown his ass. Stop trying to be friends with these guys. Never, ever... Let the inmates run the damn asylum, and this is why. Because you try to be buddies and friends to everybody, be nice to everybody, and you forget that you're there to do business at the end of the day, and you know what happens? You don't do the amount of business you should do, and then everybody's still going to have fucking problems anyway, so what the hell's the difference? And in fact, they make it worse because there's a lack of firm leadership at the top. I'm just saying. Like everybody looked like a loser in this case. And I think there's no question, no question that CM Punk's time in AEW has to be considered a disappointment. This company kind of fumbled the bag with his early run. Like, they did. You know they did. Uh, then you have the injuries. You know, that doesn't help. He clearly wasn't the same in the ring. And, and the reality is, is he's not nearly the attention getter or draw that he was being portrayed out to be uh, in the months leading up to his debut and during this past year. He's just not. He's at the high end of like hardcore fan attention getters, but that's only trying to squeeze more blood out of the turnip that AEW always try, already is trying to squeeze the maximum out of. Punk, is it going to bring you a crap ton of new eyeballs on a consistent basis? He's just not, and the evidence is there to support it. So yeah, like his time with the company so far in a little over a year has to be a disappointment. How could it not be? Which led to the reports coming out from Wade Keller and others talking about that CM Punk could be done with AEW and that a contract buyout could be in the works and that we'll see what happens, but it's very likely that he doesn't come back. And I've seen a lot of people online talking about how this is a good thing for AEW because F CM Punk, you don't need his whiny, pissy, bitchy attitude there, which is kind of hard to disagree with. That he didn't bring that much value to the table. If he doesn't want to be there, then you don't need him there. And people are bringing up some things that are totally valid and they make sense. Like, you think about him, you're like, yeah, you know what? Who wants to be around a persistent malcontent like that? Why would you? I can't imagine that the investment you made in him financially 
is being returned and what he's bringing to the table, it just can't be. And like, how much can you really count on? Because it seems like every time you turn around, this young lion's getting hurt and he's out for several months. Now, you have some people that are saying it because they're naturally backers of the elite, which again, I even get. Um, to which they're saying, you know, well, the elite are more important than him and the elite help build the place. So you show loyalty to them and you send Punk packet. And if Punk's presence is creating such a problem in the locker room, then he needs to go. Look, a lot of that crap makes sense. It really does. It can make for a pretty compelling case about why CM Punk should have his contract bowed out, should be fired, however you want to do it, and you get him the hell out of Dodge. However, I think that would be a mistake for all parties involved. All parties involved. And here's why. First, from CM Punk's standpoint, why would you agree to a buyout unless you got every single dollar that you were due and promised and guaranteed in the contract? Why would you feel any type of urgent need to settle for anything less? Why would you? Now, if they come to the table and your deal was for a few years and they're going to give you every bit of that money, then maybe you, in, you entertain it. Maybe you consider it. Especially if you can go elsewhere and make more money while you're collecting on that buyout money. I actually think Punk has a, quite a bit of leverage here, believe it or not. Why would you settle for less? And furthermore, for CM Punk, not what's he going to do? Go back to MMA? We know that's not going to freaking work. Why would you cut off your earnings power with no real alternative? Really, like, as you know, there could be something that AEW would try to squeeze in there and say, like, we'll buy you out, but for the length of time of the contract for this buyout, you can't go anywhere else and work, then why would, why would you do it? And, you know, Punk's going to be, what, 44 in October, I think? Like, he's not a spring chicken anymore. Like, the window of opportunity for him to maximize his earning power is dwindling, to which some of you that are big fans of CM Punk, cool for you, are going to say, well, he's not about the money, he doesn't need the money. Well, he certainly didn't come back just for the love of wrestling. Let's get real here. Like you want to be able to set yourself up to live comfortably for the rest of your life, he's got to maximize his earning power now. And allowing himself to be bought out doesn't do that. Also, when it comes to CM Punk, if he's really going to be out of action for six, seven, eight months with this torn muscle, why do you feel the need to rush any action or decision at this point? Because he's already on the shelf with an injury. If that's legit and that's true, then why do you feel the need to have to make any decision right now? You keep the suspension, whatever, that's fine, but... Dude's already not going to be there. He's already not going to be working. So what difference does it make? Why be in such a hurry after a couple of weeks to make potentially a very rash decision when you don't know how the climate of wrestling, the forecast of your company is going to look six to eight months down the road? Why be in such a hurry to make this decision and make this action now? Well, some of you, I'm sure, are going to point to, well, this makes a statement. This is a statement made by Tony Khan that nobody's above the law here, and it even includes somebody that you've given a lot of money to and a lot of opportunity to in CM Punk. And it sends a positive message to that locker room. And maybe it does, because you're saying it says that you can't do that crap. You can't go out there and make the company look bad. Tony Khan make look bad. Others on the roster look bad. You can't make the locker room look bad. You're not going to have that divided locker room. Negativity has no place here. Like, like maybe it does send a positive message. But to me, it also sends a message, if you do that, that the elite's BS is okay. Don't get it twisted. They have culpability and guilt here too. They do. I blame Punk for being a little whiny ass bitch. And doing what he did at the scrum like that. It was uncalled for. It was unprofessional. Just flat out stupid. And should not be praised. Even if he found a lot of truth in what he said. And I found quite a bit of truth in what he said too. 
doesn't mean that that's the appropriate place, form, or avenue to just air that out, basically. But don't get it twisted. The elite, specifically Omega and the Bucks and Paige, you know they're about their bullshit too. They're like a great value version of the clique. You all fucking know that. And don't get it twisted. AEW could do just fine without them. To which you're going to say, that's outrageous. There's no way they could. When you especially think about the on-screen product, they went many months without Kenny Omega. They certainly didn't suffer. The Young Bucks only kind of half ass matter some of the time in terms of the on-screen product. And they seem to be doing just fine. I've certainly just seen the acclaim be more over during this recent stretch than the Young Bucks ever have been during the three years of AEW. And if you say that's not true, then argue with the fucking wall because you're wrong. Like, if you want to make a statement, make a statement that will resonate. If you want to fire or get rid of CM Punk, cool to me. Then do it with Omega and the Bucks and Hangman Page 2. Fuck them, you don't need them. Because if it's not CM Punk, it's going to be somebody else and the drama is going to continue with these fucking brats. Either they all go or they all stay. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the right approach to take is none of them should be bigger than the company or the brand. That losing any one of them or even a collection of a few of them will not significantly negatively impact the company. A lot of you will take to the comments with your flaming keyboard fingers and fire and say, of course it will. These guys, the EVPs are the foundation of it. They'll be fine. AEW will be fine. And if you say, well, no, they wouldn't be. Well, when they're in featured spots, it's not like they're elevating the company much anyways. So what the fuck's the difference? Honestly. Like, if you're going to say nobody's bigger than the brand, then say nobody's bigger than the brand. Everybody has culpability here. Fire them all. Buy them all out. Release them. Whatever. Or if you don't want to do that, instead of making CM Punk the scapegoat and the fall guy here, even though he certainly has some... Uh, deserve merit there for being that guy. Why not just sit there and wait, be patient, let shit blow over a little bit, and then do what you're supposed to do in wrestling, which is try to make some money off this shit. Fans always love when the real life behind the scenes drama makes it to the screen in the ring. Go there! Air that shit out! Make frickin' money off of it. Like, the biggest disappointment here was after all that crap with the post-all-out media scrum is that this company did nothing to really follow up on it. They just acted like it didn't happen. No, go there. If Tony Khan wants to be in that Vince McMahon level or be better than Vince McMahon, then fucking go there. You goddamn good and well know Vince would. Just let this shit ride for a little while. Don't make any rash, hasty decisions. Bring the real life to the screen in the ring. So the fans live for now in wrestling anyways. Like, let's air that shit out. Make some money off of it. You know, <laughs> what you're supposed to do with professional wrestling. So that's me. I get where people are saying buying out CM Punk's contract makes some sense. But I just think for all the parties involved, like, cooler heads really need to prevail here. Let some time go by. Let distance work its course. Let time work its course a little bit. And then come back and do what you're supposed to do in wrestling, which is try to make the best out of the situation. If you're saying, well, you don't need CM Punk, you don't need any of these other fuckheads in the elite either. But if you got them, why not do something with it? That's all I'm saying. No need to make a rash, hasty decision right now. There just isn't.